for this section, uh, we have uh, yet another very special speakers, namely Professor Oğuz Gülseren, Gülseren from uh, Bilkent University. He's going to talk about exploring 2D materials for novel application from first principle. Let us please join me in welcoming very warmly Professor Oğuz Gülseren. Thank you, Abhishek. Thank you. Hello. Uh, so this is the talk before the lunch. I'm no. Uh, I know everyone is very uh, impatient, so I'll try to make it quick. But I'll change the uh, topic a little bit. I'll try to introduce uh, a different approach, and I'll try to introduce the 2D materials uh, in a, a different concept suitable to do this workshop. So this novel applications includes several things. These are the things we did. But today, uh, what I'll try to introduce one very special thing. And I'll try to talk a little bit about the electronic properties of the uh, more patterns. And I'll, uh, from this uh, long title, maybe I should summarize and uh, I can uh, excite everybody a little bit more. Uh, if I just said uh, twisted bilayer graphene. So this is the most popular topic of the, this uh, last year. And actually now everybody is start to talk about the uh, twistronics. So uh, we uh, start with electronics, spintronics. Now the stage is uh, just <coughs> open to the uh, twistronics. Uh, so my. Uh, uh, Actually, uh, this is an interesting uh, for me. Uh, I start with a completely different point of view. I'll uh, show my motivation first, and I'll try to introduce uh, 2D materials in general to this audience. Uh, no, uh, not everybody is very experienced with that. But the main uh, idea of the t uh, talk is going to be on this picture, which I uh, steal from the quanta web page. So you see the honeycomb platys, uh, so it's zero degree. Uh, they just match on each other. But uh, with a little of rotation, there are two sheets. So there is one sheet, and another sheet is just sitting on top of that one. And uh, you see uh, there is a, like a one degrees, or you can see from here, like a one degrees, 1.1 degrees of the rotation of the upper sheet with respect to the lower one. And you see a little bit patterns. I'll, introduced in a minute, uh, then uh, actually uh, that's the groundbreaking uh, experiment of the last year that was announced like 18 months ago, uh, March meeting, uh, 2018 March meeting. I think nowadays, uh, I think around 30 different research groups is just working on this problem. Uh, still, we don't know the answer. I don't know the answer. Don't expect me the answer from this talk. I'll just introduce the topic, and uh, I'll show what was our motivation and what was our results from such a simple system, how interesting things we can get out, uh, you will see at the end of the talk. So we are two minutes short introduction. I'll start with this uh, cover book of the, uh, cover page of the book by the abbot, uh, Flatland, where he described the uh, things uh, on reduced dimension, the projected on the uh, two dimension. Here, I mean, several dimensions, but uh, today, uh, the system, the graphene actually, uh, just uh, from the flatland, just two dimensional uh, uh, things. Uh, and this is one of the slight general uh, properties of the graphene, a very simple one, but with a very amazing uh, uh, materials properties. It's very light, very strong, very transparent, very good conductor. Uh, we are familiar from even from the bulk physics uh, at all. Uh, but it is very simple. Uh, everybody knows this. In the very old days, we were using this uh, during the winter times. Uh, we burn in our uh, ovens and so on. But nowadays, uh, you are all familiar with the pencil. Uh, and the physics, sorry, uh, physics of that is uh, very simple, uh, just based on the, uh, two different sets of the molecular orbitals. SP2 type of the uh, very strong covalent bonds within the planes and the uh, perpendicular PZ orbitals to the planes. Uh, in the bulk form, in the graphite, uh, we have the layers just stack up on uh, top of each other. 
when this is isolated uh, in a very simple way, uh, just using a piece of scotch tape, you just uh, press with the scotch tape over the graphite surface. If you peel very softly, you can end up with a single layer. And actually, uh, that simple uh, experiment, very cheap experiment, uh, just ended up uh, the Nobel Prize for the guy and the uh, Nobel set of. Uh, uh, why uh, not just the isolation of this single layer, but actually the physics behind that uh, is very extraordinary. The most famous one is the drug electrons. If you look at the uh, uh, pi bands arise from the, these piezo orbitals uh, around the corner of the brillion zone, these are the so-called k points. Uh, you see. Uh, they are touching each other. The Fermi level is just at the intersection point. So this is the blow-up picture. Uh, this is the valence band occupied by the electrons. The Fermi level is at that point. Then this is the empty conduction band. Uh, and at that region, uh, you see that this linear uh, relationship, uh, which is called uh, the extremely fast drug electrons. And because of the, this resemblance uh, to the drug equation, uh, this is named as the uh, uh, drug con uh, and the drug particles. Uh, so because uh, I mean the actual uh, band structure is a simple uh, Condensed matter textbook uh, example, you can do the tight binding calculation, get the cosine band uh, as shown here. But when you zoom around the Fermi level where the physical properties arise, uh, you end up with these uh, extraordinary uh, properties. So uh, uh, with this introduction, let me uh, come to the uh, twisted graphene. Uh, so we look at. Uh, this problem, maybe three, four years ago, much before than the, uh, this experiment I'm going to show in a minute, with a very simple uh, question. So you have uh, two layers of this. Uh, and uh, our friends at the Istanbul Technical University were measuring the uh, surface picture using the scanning tunneling microscopy. Uh, and they uh, observed this. Uh, uh, super periodic structures, which, which are called the Moria patterns. And uh, we were trying to help uh, to describe this uh, experiment using a very simple uh, charge density calculation and so on, and try to uh, explain how the, these pictures arise. Is it electronic? It is morphological, and so on. That was the whole starting point of the project. So uh, let me. Uh, these are the uh, experiments done at the ITU, and the calculation done uh, was done uh, by my PhD students uh, at that time. Uh, so let me uh, introduce the uh, very basic things here. Uh, so we have the two layers of the uh, graphene, uh, bilayer graphene, or even you can look at the uh, three-dimensional graphite. When you look at the STM, uh, so you approach and with the uh, certain bias conditions, you take the image of the surface, you end up a uh, picture uh, something like this. So this is uh, what you observed uh, from the uh, graphite surface uh, by the SDM. Uh, so let's go one step further. So this is uh, any general shape, uh, any lattice like that. And if you rotate, uh, one with respect to other one, uh, you see, uh, so this is a small periodicity, but here you observe, you can easily observe some uh, uh, larger periodic uh, structures uh, based on this uh, rotation. And actually, that depends on the uh, uh, rotation angle. I think that will come uh, in the next slide. So th these patterns are uh, actually quite common. Uh, so for example, if you try to grow some material over a substrate, you might end up with an incommensurate uh, substrates, and you might end up with these uh, super periodic structures, uh, and so on. So if you try to uh, go over the metal surfaces, these are already reported, named as the Moray patterns. So the name is a little bit confusing. Uh, actually, uh, name is very uh, uh, local. It came from the Ankara God. So maybe you might be uh, familiar with these shorts and so on. Uh, so this, this is a very quality uh, 
knitting uh, stuff. So the more uh, just because of the, that design of the, these uh, shirts came from uh, this one. You can check from the Wikipedia uh, the details. Uh, the essential uh, structure is like that. So on uh, two layers of the hexagonal lattice on top of each other. So if I rotate five degrees, uh, you see the uh, another periodicity. Ten degrees, you see uh, smaller structures uh, compared to the periodicity is a little bit shorter compared to that one. Larger angles, uh, a different type of the pattern, a different periodicity, uh, and so on. So depending on this angle, uh, you can end up with the uh, different uh, patterns uh, and periodicity that we can describe uh, with a, uh, this simple geometrical factor here. Uh, so let me show if, uh, this is uh, real uh, from some uh, simple STM experiments. So here I'm just showing the graphite uh, picture, STM picture. You see the triangular lattice. You can uh, resolve three out of the uh, six atoms, carbon atoms of the hexagons. So when you go uh, this uh, rotated structures, uh, uh, now uh, the periodicity uh, uh, is larger. We have the superstructure. So here, these are the periodicity numbers. You can see this is quite uh, large, a uh, small uh, rotation. So in this one, again, just comparison of this, uh, another uh, angle corresponding to the periodicity of this amount. This is another example. You can see the atomic resolution even from this experiment. Uh, dash uh, and so on. So how uh, this was done uh, is very simple. Uh, Dilek just picked the uh, graphite, uh, dissolved with the simple uh, acetone, then just dried. During the, uh, uh, when it dries, it uh, end up with a uh, different stacking. So that, there was uh, very little control on the angle, but each time you end up with uh, some more pattern uh, like this. So that was uh, our motivation. But then uh, last year, 2018, uh, just at the week of the APS March meeting, uh, an experiment uh, reported. So uh, on that one, you see uh, this rotation angle uh, is very small. It's just 1.1 degrees. Uh, uh, this was the uh, paper from the Harvard uh, Herrero groups. Uh, so they published two papers on the uh, nature at that very week. Uh, so this was uh, their uh, resistance uh, as a function of the temperature. So you see at some point around one Kelvin that drops to zero. So uh, it became a superconductor. So this is very unconventional. It's just a carbon atom. Uh, there is no magnetic element here, uh, no complicated structure. I showed at the beginning. It's just sp2 type of the uh, bonds. Very simple chemistry. Uh, but uh, here it is. Uh, it's just a simple mechanical rotation. Uh, you end up with a uh, superconductor state. So if you look at the band structure, again, from the same thing, what's uh, astonishing is uh, there is a uh, new band, flat band, just appears uh, at this angle uh, at the Fermi level. So this uh, flat band, uh, so at the half filling, uh, it's the motor insulator. Uh, the one advantage of this graphene, actually, you can dope just by applying a gate voltage, uh, uh, this. So uh, just playing with this voltage, uh, you can dope, and uh, that goes to the superconductor state. Uh, so. Uh, it exhibits a strongly correlated system. Uh, after that, uh, during uh, this uh, 2019 APS March meeting, for example, uh, the talks on this twisted uh, bilayer talks uh, was not on the regular rooms, rooms. They just accept the standing uh, participants. It was impossible to enter the rooms uh, and so on. I think, uh, I mean, a couple of weeks ago, I read somewhere 30 active groups are working on this problem, try to uh, explain this. Um, uh, experimentally, this uh, repeated by uh, two or uh, 
three different groups. So this original uh, rotation 1.1, I think last week, uh, one article published on Science Advance is 0 0.93 de degrees of the rotation. Uh, 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 they observed again uh, superconductivity uh, on this type of the text. So that, uh, okay, that was not our motivation. Uh, uh, our motivation just uh, try to uh, understand this uh, STM experiments. But even during that uh, calculations, we observed several uh, different uh, unexpected uh, properties of uh, this simple uh, system. So we. Uh, construct lattice, uh, uh, defined the rotation con uh, convention, and we rotated the system, and so on. Did the some uh, first principle calculations. So I'll try to show uh, two or three points uh, on this uh, limited time uh, what might uh, be happening uh, on this system without answering the reason of the superconductivity here. So first of all uh, is the geometrical thing. So if you uh, look at, so this is the uh, rotated one. Uh, the rotation angle is 8.6 degrees on this example. So these are the atomic position. Uh, if we calculate the uh, charge density, they look like the atomic positions and so on. And this is the uh, periodicity of this uh, Mora pattern here. But uh, be careful. Just <coughs> let's look at a little bit close. Uh, uh, to uh, superstructures, I just uh, blow up here. So from that region, uh, you see that looks like an AA stacking. Then on the second one, from the SDM pictures I showed at the beginning, these two look uh, very similar, uh, very same uh, each other. But if you look at a little bit detail, uh, you see uh, this is a different uh, type of the configuration. Here we have the hole at the center. Here we have the atom at the center coming from one of the planes. So it ends up with a uh, different staking uh, again. Uh, so uh, here then uh, we need to be careful. Actually, the real periodicity, uh, periodicity is shouldn't be defined from here to there, but from this to the image or I'm showing here. Real more periodicity is uh, different. Uh, if you just measure uh, the angle from the uh, STM pictures, uh, that's uh, quite confusing. And that was a, one of the mistakes uh, of the literature at that time. Actually, this gives a, a clue here. So from these rotations, uh, you end up uh, with the, this type of the local structures, uh, but with the three different type of the stackings, both AA, uh, the carbon atoms on top of each other, or AB. Uh, one uh, carbon atoms uh, at the center of the hexagonal of the other layer, or the BA, the other way around. So three different type of the local structures. Uh, in principle, uh, the interaction is very little between the layers. So we have a strong covalent bonds within the layers, but between the layers, the weak one there was uh, uh, happening. Uh, so the hop hopping uh, in the plane is like a 2.5 EV, but uh, Interplane hopping is like a 0.1 EV, very, very weak. But that's uh, enough uh, to change the physics uh, and to observe uh, different uh, properties there. Then the second, uh, actually with the STM, uh, it is possible to uh, measure the uh, density of states. So if you measure uh, the uh, current and uh, if you look at the di dv, you uh, essentially end up uh, with the density of states. And uh, here I'm just showing the uh, graphene, then the disrotated one. So if you compare the graphene uh, with the twisted graphene, you can see that these extra peaks, actually these are correspond to the one of singularities. Uh, and that one of the singularities depends on the uh, rotation angle uh, there. Uh, so these are uh, uh, two different calculations, one from the uh, DFT, the other just coming from the full tight binding calculation. Uh, simply, uh, I can show the reason uh, of the, this one of the singularities. So there are emerging of the new bands. Uh, uh, locally flat bands that uh, sometimes settle points, sometimes that extrema end up uh, uh, with this uh, 
one of a singularities uh, in this structure. So depending on the uh, two different orientation, two different uh, uh, rotation uh, pattern, uh, this uh, the reason uh, might change. Sometimes uh, this might happen around the uh, k point here. Uh, sometimes actually in between around the M points. Uh, so usually what you expect from the literature, just the hybridization of the drug uh, bands uh, around the K points will lead to the one hour singularity. But actually, uh, that's more deeper than that. And that was uh, one of the mistakes of the literature I'll try to uh, summarize here. Uh, usually uh, people try to explain this just using the uh, low energy expansion of the tight binding Hamiltonian. But uh, if you look at uh, the band structure, so I just summarize here, with the uh, different rotation angles. So these are corresponds with the different angles. Uh, and uh, if you look at the energies where we uh, observe this one hour singularities, you see uh, uh, the energy is shifted uh, with respect to the rotation angle. So if you uh, start with uh, small rotation, it's a small energy. And uh, if you uh, look at the band structure, it's circular. So it's a cone, if you look at the cone shape. If you get the uh, cross section, it should be circular. OK, that satisfies the drag cone, and we can use the uh, low energy tight binding. But that's a very, very uh, small region, but actually, uh, this simply goes to the higher energies uh, with the, uh, not the drag cone, but that follows the cosine band structure uh, and so on. So definitely uh, low energy tight binding uh, theories uh, does not give the correct things. You should go and uh, do the full calculation there. Uh, you end up uh, with the uh, correct description of that. This is one point. The second, uh, actually, uh, this might shift because of the, this shape uh, change. So the cross section, not necessarily to be happen at the K point of the brillion zone. Actually, that shifts between the, from M point to the uh, gamma point. So depending on your orientation and so on, this hybridization might be a completely different uh, nature. So uh, maybe I can show that with a very simple uh, So I'll show the both of the uh, orientations and the uh, so this is one of the cases. Uh, uh, so at that energy, so when you rotate, actually, uh, so this is the larger graphene beryllium zone. This is the uh, more uh, beryllium zone, and the intersection happens. Uh, near the M points, as I showed at the uh, band structure uh, at the beginning. So this is nothing uh, related with the K point uh, there, but very far from. So this is the, uh, another case. Again, so the larger one is the graphene. The smaller one, the more period, brilliant uh, zone. Now, in this case, uh, the intersection happens around the K point uh, and so on. So if I put the band structure uh, again, you will see. So depending on the rotation angle and depending on armchair or the zigzag uh, uh, orientation you are using, either you might end up the uh, this one how singularity is around the uh, M point or uh, around the uh, K point. Uh, so this might change, and it really depends on your uh, rotation angle and the all uh, orientation and so on. So if I summarize uh, all these, so these are these labels uh, just corresponding with the uh, different rotation angles. Uh, so compared to the graphene, uh, you see the emergence of the new one have a singularities, and that's shifting uh, as a function of the uh, rotation uh, angle uh, there. 
So I can uh, actually summarize that as a function of the uh, rotation, how uh, they move this uh, energies uh, as a function of this. And this is also reflected on the uh, Fermi velocity uh, as well. Uh, if you uh, simply just follow that, again, uh, there is a, a, a angle dependent uh, rotation uh, and so on. Uh, so uh, here, uh, yes, I have a couple of more minutes. Uh, let me summarize here. Actually, uh, this is a very simple system. We have the, just the carbon atoms, uh, two type of the uh, bonds, strong sp2 covalent bonds, and the weak uh, Van der Waals interaction. But a small rotation uh, might end up with a, a completely exciting system. Uh, so now everybody is try to explain this superconductivity, unconventional uh, superconductivity observed on uh, distant, uh, this uh, simple system. So I just want to finish with a uh, saying from the uh, Feynman, there is uh, always room uh, at the bottom. So uh, these are uh, these uh, new uh, novel systems, uh, always we end up with a new quantum states. Uh, so hopefully, maybe in the next year, if we repeat this, maybe we can know the answer of the, uh, uh, this uh, nature of the this superconductor states. Uh, uh, so thank you. Yes. So are there some experiments about triple layer or multi layers? Yeah, the triple layer experiments also performed. Uh, they report a similar type of the superconductivity. I don't remember the uh, TC, but I think around, uh, again, one, uh, one degree is very small. But on triple layers, uh, that's also reported. So may I ask a question? So if you enlarge, for example, the triple layers, what is your feeling? Can you decrease the temperature in which you can achieve this effect? Uh, the temperature is already very low. It's but as I could see from the slides, it varies from the different orientations, right? And probably also the fight is how to increase the temperature to achieve it to give a high one. So is there some uh, clues how you can do it? And is it a hope that if you enlarge a number of players, and maybe you can achieve it uh, high temperature? Uh, so that's, that's difficult. Here, what I showed is usually large angles, like the 10 degrees, 12 degrees, and so on. This, uh, uh, OK, actually, I didn't put the full band structure there. Uh, what's happening here, we have a, uh, at that time, when I did this calculation, maybe three years ago, four years ago, even from the tight binding, I observed completely flat bands, but the, those are down in the energy, like a, 2 EV, 4 EV uh, in that region and so on. So when you go this small angle, 1.1, that flat band uh, rises above and uh, appears uh, at the firm energy. So it is just alignment of the dead state. Uh, so they are there, these flat bands, uh, somewhere in the uh, band structure. But when they align uh, with the Fermi level, I think this uh, interesting uh, superconductor state arises. So people try to control that, but, but uh, very little control for the moment. Because which, which one is better, small angle or large angle? If you want to have better. So I mean, in this case, the small angle. Small angle means uh, actually I try to show the figure one things. The periodicity is very large. So you slightly you just touch. So these are the very very super structures. Uh, periodicity is very large. Uh, in that case, I mean that's my feeling. Uh, then this flat band just arise at that region. Is there any uh, evidence for superconducting other than vanishing resistance? It is a type two thing, I think, right? Any other measurements? Uh, probably yes. Uh, I don't have the data. I don't know, but probably yes. Since uh, I mean, they publish uh, two papers that in, uh, that nature issue. So first, I mean, they observed the insulating state at the half filling. Then when they pass, they uh, this jumps to the uh, superconductor state. So it's quite interesting in that sense. 
Uh, but I, I'm not uh, sure about other experimental data. But this is reproduced, this experiment reproduced with the different groups, not a, just a single experiment. Any short questions? Are there any other materials, for example, the hexagonal boron nitride, nitride that this experiment has formed? I mean, I mean, this result is specific to graphene for the moment. I mean, people trying the other materials, uh, TMDs and so on, but this is specific for graphene for the moment. Well, the is insulator. That's insulator as well. But I mean, people trying the TMDs and so on. So we are doing TMDs, I mean, even like this, for frictional properties and so on. So there was also this thing that the certain angles seem to be more stable. Do you see anything? No, uh, there is no, uh, I mean, this, this is called... Uh, this is from uh, E2 data, right? They see that when you rip it off, you see that the, the uh, you know, the, actually it sits on certain angles. It is not always uh, just a continuous angle that you have to tune. Do you see anything? No, no, I mean, th this is... They call it as the magic angle, 1.1, just because of the superconductivity. But in terms of the energetic, everything is metastable. Uh, it is continuous. Actually, two days, three days ago, I asked this very same question to the Frank Coppens. They are doing this, just stamping each other. After, I mean, they can put any angle they want. Then I ask if they relax to do some specific angles. No, uh, they continuously uh, go through the angles. That's, that's his claim. You see that when it's wrapped, it's open, it actually sits on a definite angle, not, not, not like, not really complex. So no, I, uh, that's hmm. so I mean, from energetic, yeah, it, there is a feeling like that, but I mean, uh, from my experience and from the experimentally I ask, they yeah. said uh, it doesn't relax. Maybe the structure is large, the relaxation is dif uh, difficult. One more question, so this last question. Just education or education. Do you expect some application of graphene-based structures for quantum computation, quantum technology, quantum sensing, etc.? I mean, uh, the reason I the, uh, yeah, the reason I pick uh, this topic to present today, with these systems, you end up with a very strange state. So, uh, you know, I mean, some days somebody come up with a, a nice, clever idea to use this. Uh, I mean, for the moment, uh, not so many. Thank you.